In this video, we're going to be talking about how to calculate your power running up a flight of stairs. So some common formulas that you're going to use for this lab are the potential energy formula, MGH, our work formula, force times distance, which also involves a cosine theta, which you don't need in this one, and then also power equals work divided by time. So we're going to talk about how to execute this lab from um, the very beginning to the end. And how we're going to do that is we're going to start out um, with the actual person involved. Um, so say, for example, you are 200 pounds. Um, we want to do some conversions with that. Um, we know that there are 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. So if you take 200 divided by 2.2, um, you can get your mass. And that mass would come out to 90.91 kilograms. Okay, we don't actually necessarily need that mass, but I'm just going to write that down anyways. And then we can do one more conversion. We know that there's one kilogram, or excuse me, 9.8 newtons in one kilogram. So if you take 200 divided by 9.8, excuse me, divided by 2.2 times 9.8, you would get your force of gravity, basically your weight in newtons. And then that would come out to a much larger number, which is 890.91 newtons. Okay, so there we have our weight in newtons, which is a fairly large number because newton is a pretty small unit. Secondly, what you're going to want to do is figure out the vertical height of the staircase. So the main force you're overcoming is your FG, the pull down from the earth. And although you're not going up vertically, like climbing a rope, um, the closest thing to it is going up a flight of stairs. So there's going to be some horizontal force that you're going to need to drive yourself forward. The majority of it is to drive yourself up vertically. So we're more interested in this distance over here. Now, the way we're going to do that is we would measure a single step. And say, for exa example, that single step is 20 centimeters. We're going to go ahead and convert that. And that's going to be 0 0.2 meters once you divide that by 100. And then we're going to count how many times we step up from the initial floor level, which is one, two, three, four. So we're going to rise up four times. So times four steps and then 0 0.8 meters is our total vertical distance. All right, so from there, <clears throat> Um, we can go ahead and start doing some calculations so we can figure out the amount of work done by taking the force that we are overcoming, the FG 890.91 times our vertical distance of 0 0.8. And then the work done in climbing the stairs is 712.73 joules. So that's basically talking about the amount of energy that you are basically transferring to yourself and then you're gaining gravitational potential energy up here by gaining some more height off the ground. If you wanted to, which you don't necessarily need to, you could take your mass times 9.8 G times the height off the ground. And if we use that MGH formula, and multiply those three, you actually come up with the same exact number for our work value, 712.73 joules, because your gain in potential energy is the same thing as your work done, the amount of energy transferred. Now, what we're going to do next is go ahead and find the value for the power. So the power equals the work over the time. And you're going to have to go ahead and time yourself or have someone time you running up the stairs. Um, so you're going to go from the bottom to the top. And then once your foot contacts that top level, we're going to plug in that time. I'm just going to make up a time of about two and a half seconds. So if we put in two and a half seconds, then we have a value that is 285.09 watts. So that is how many joules per second of energy you are releasing as you run up that flight of stairs. Um, that's basically it as far as calculating your own power going up the stairs. Um, in addition to that, you can also calculate your horsepower. How you do that is you just do one more conversion because there's um, 746 watts is equivalent to one horsepower. 
So they came up with that number as the average amount of power exerted by um, a horse pulling a plow back in the day. So we can go ahead and calculate our own horsepower. So we are obviously underneath that 746. So we're just going to be a fraction of that power. So if we take 285.09 watts, and then we say that there's 746 watts per one horsepower, then we can basically convert by dividing those two, and then our horsepower comes out to 0 0.38. So that's sort of an extra little one there. So to sum things up, you want to make sure you find your weight, which is basically your force in newtons um, by doing some kind of calculation along these lines. And then um, after that, um, you want to get the vertical distance of your stairs by finding the height of a step, multiplying it by the amount of steps that you climb up. And then once you get the force and that distance, you multiply them to get the work done. The work done, done is not dependent on time. So that's the amount of work done regardless of how fast you go up. And then once you get your time and you divide those, this is the rate at which you're doing work. So that is time dependent. That is how many joules per second you are releasing as you run up the flight of stairs. And then if you want to do an extra little calculation to find out how much horsepower you have, you take that number divided by 746 and you'll get your horsepower. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.